Hi everybody, my name is Andy Meir and I'm Chair in Science Communication and Future Media in the University and it's a pleasure to have the chance to talk to you a little bit about what I do and perhaps also talk a bit about what I've been doing over the last three months during the COVID-19 lockdown crisis and it's been a challenging three months for all of us hasn't it? It's been a, a whirlwind in many respects of emotions, of challenges and of trying to figure out how to approach working in what are really extraordinarily difficult times. Um, I myself have a son of 10 years old who I think is lucky. I'm lucky enough that he's at an age where he can get on with work but even that has sort of taught me how much support children need in education and even getting onto tasks from day to day so it's been a, a balancing act of making sure that he can have some degree of normality over this period but also making sure that I can get on with the things that I need to be doing for work and um at this particular time with marking deadlines around us and exam boards coming up it has been really difficult but um, the focus for today is really about creativity innovation how to work smarter and I suppose my sort of first reference point has been the communications that the university has sent out to everybody which I have felt incredibly supportive and have encouraged us to look after ourselves and I don't know whether it's because we have so many departments that are sort of mindful of the mental stress that people face in the workplace and just the challenges of life generally and perhaps the community around Salford also makes us more attuned to the fact that these are really difficult times and our expectations of each other should begin firstly with compassion and care and just thoughtfulness about what we're all going through and I've really appreciated the messages the university sent out of that nature and um, certainly amongst my colleagues particularly in the School of Science engineering and environment um, surrounded by many people who are doing incredible work actually in support of the sort of fight against covid and um, and that's been really inspiring to see colleagues working even in in test centers or making protective equipment for hospital workers has been really uplifting and uh, at the same time it sort of makes you feel that anything you're doing just feels insignificant in comparison to that and of course there has been such a national effort to develop research activity around COVID. In fact, one of the things that I do is, is I lead something we have called the science communication space. And it really is a space which allows us to share all the work that we do for researchers to support their work being more publicly facing, to develop skills, to be out there in the public domain, giving talks about research. And we put together a page of calls for papers from journals and the list is almost endless. There are so many journals that have had initial calls for papers for COVID related research that you could find a home for any research paper, I think, amongst that list. So everybody from people working in marketing to public health care are finding some way to turn their research to this subject of COVID. And it certainly has inspired me to think about it. Some of the work I've been doing over the last few months, uh, some of the desk-based research I've done, because of course, one of the big challenges is we can't really get out there and do our research. So um, I began some work looking at TikTok, the platform that you may well have heard about and either love or hate, um, but is certainly used by especially young people. And I was really interested to see how this platform was communicating the messages around COVID. So I'll talk a bit about that in a moment, perhaps, but it's a way of trying to think about how we adapt to the sort of imposition of the urgency of the situation, but also find a way to make sure that we can remain sort of faithful to the sort of work that we do. And, um, and so one of the other things I did was write an article for the Times Higher Education, which really asked and called upon people to not forget that their research still matters. So even if you're not doing COVID related work, your research really matters a great deal, not just to me personally, but I think to the academy at large to approach sort of knowledge creation with that in mind is really important, especially at a time when um, we see the cultural sector, the arts sector being decimated for funding uh, because of the current crisis and the risks to that world I think are quite challenging and, and really significant so reminding people that history matters that sociology matters that philosophy matters all these subjects that you would think are intimately connected to the immediate challenges we, we face because of the Covid crisis still matter in the wider scale of, of, of our research and our knowledge creation. It matters in terms of how we innovate with research subjects. It matters that students can look upon us as a place in which knowledge creation occurs in a very rounded sense. So 
So the article I wrote was really a kind of a call to action for people to not become too despondent with their work at this time because it still matters that they continue. And I think that's especially important when you think about the way in which the research excellence framework is, is being postponed. Some would say it may be postponed indefinitely, but there's so much uncertainty that I think this challenge to stay not just focused on our on our workloads, but also motivated is a really big, big ask of people. Many people, of course, are working in conditions that are incredibly challenging. The, the, the space around them may be very limited. The people around them may need a great deal of support. And so I, I really hope that uh, actually our, our sort of end point of this crisis will be a, a real change in how we think about working, how we approach working with each other and um, and be more understanding of, of the sort of flexibility that people need in their day to day lives. And I mean, I, I feel quite pleased to have, have seen how we've transitioned into Teams meetings. And uh, I think people are quite happy with it. They actually think, well, face to face meetings aren't necessarily the best way to go to get the most out of people or indeed to be more flexible to people to ensure that they can get on with their other priorities in their day to day work or indeed their lives personally. So creative thinking involves embracing these new platforms and discovering new ways of working that hopefully then can give rise to a, a more compassionate uh, working environment and that for me as someone that also sits on the Athena Swan committee um, is really important that I think this may nudge institutions into better working practices. Um, another big factor for me has been collaboration. Now, I typically of an average year will give maybe 30 to 50 talks around the world about uh, all sorts of research subjects. I was due to go to the Olympic Games this year in Tokyo, which of course has been postponed. And what I've tried to do is to keep motivated by making videos about my research, working with organizations to deliver an online program of their activities. So one of the big ones in the last month has been the Cheltenham Science Festival. And um, that's been a great experience because it, it feels as a, a long time collaborator of that festival and the University of Salford's done a lot with them and, and its team, in fact, as well, more widely, who have all been involved with lots of different festivals around the UK to support them in a time when, in fact, they, they are at risk is, is such a wonderful thing to do. And it's not been that difficult to make videos for their platform. And I think that sense of solidarity that's come out of this period is really powerful and I think will create a, a better situation for us all but um, but in that respect working across platforms to deliver content not just in teams but in the now infamous zoom platform or, or even in instagram facebook tiktok even these are all really interesting platforms to discover as a researcher because you realize not just that there are many channels for communicating our work but also that the means by which we communicate our research are actually becoming less relevant to the next generation. I, I kind of believe that the era of the PDF, which is what many academics sort of see as their locus of communicating their research, is coming to an end. Most students are research, are investigating materials through their mobile devices. And if you've tried to read a PDF on a mobile phone, you'll realise it's not particularly well adapted to that situation. So I think a lot is dawning on us that's coming about through this period. We realise how challenging can be for students to even keep up with literature because of the fact that they have limited internet connectivity or their devices have limited space and storage and I think all of these insights will help us work more effectively um, and I think it's even very small things like um, I discovered in Teams recently that on the mobile application you can send audio notes to colleagues rather than type out messages. And for me, it's a wonderful thing, not because I just hate typing on a mobile phone, but also because I think you get to hear other people's voices too. So in this time where we can't see or visit each other, we can still send these audio notes rather than text uh, text until we're sick of doing so. And, um, and those small things make a big difference to my day-to-day -day life, being able to connect with colleagues that otherwise we wouldn't be able to. In fact, I think one of the most remarkable things for me in terms of my day-to-day -day interaction with colleagues is that I think I've met more people in the university than I've met in the last few years. So I think there's something about being more present virtually that's compelled us to get together a bit more. And uh, I think many people are, are quite finding that quite challenging. It's quite exhausting to be on these environments too much, which is why I love what seems to be now the 
the, the sort of approach to doing meetings where you open up your camera and your mic, you say hello, turn it off, and then just listen and tune in for much of the meeting. And I think that's a necessary thing. It's something that I think people have realized allows them to stay engaged with the content, but also allows them to have that space where they don't feel like they're on camera all the time, which I think many people find quite tiring and frustrating. So I think in this period, um, the sort of conversations that we've had um, have been very much of these sort of this nature, this this idea that, in fact, we need to be understanding. We need to appreciate people's life circumstances and accommodate their varying needs. And that, for me, has been a, a real plus and bonus. I think many of us feel we can't wait to get back to campus, see each other, see students and interact more fully. But uh, I kind of hope that out of this, the creative, innovative learning that we've done will be of that nature, a way of thinking about doing things differently and hopefully being more understanding about each other's particular needs. So I look forward to seeing the conversation about this. Um, if you have any questions about platforms that you may want to use or experiments that you may want to try, then please do get in touch. I'll be sharing more videos anyway, so you'll hopefully be able to see some of these. I put a lot on LinkedIn, put a lot on Twitter. So please do get on those platforms if you're not, because I love connecting with colleagues uh, and knowing, <laughs> even discovering job descriptions I didn't even know existed is a wonderful way of appreciating the university and I think all its riches. Um, I'm a firm believer of the fact that any single university is too vast for any any individual to really fully appreciate and so always welcome the chance to get to know more people um you can follow me on twitter just follow me on andy mir on all these platforms just google my name and you can find me i'd love to hear from you and uh, look forward to speaking to you at some point in the future